From Los Angeles, time once again for Money TV. I'm Don Belarge, and thanks for joining us. Money TV is the program all about money and what makes it happen. Well, this is a very special episode of Money TV. It's episode number 1,000. Been doing this for 22 years, so glad you could be part of this. So we thought we'd do something kind of special. We're on location at the WHTC Marijuana Collective in Los Angeles. We have two industries we've been talking very much about here on Money TV, cannabis and Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. These two industries are kind of converging because you cannot use uh, credit cards and the like to pay for cannabis and dispensaries like this. So Bitcoin is being seen as a possible solution. We have a company we'll be talking in great detail on this program, Single Point Incorporated. Their stock symbol is S-I-N-G. They have a solution for this. So this is what we're going to be doing at this very special episode of Money TV. Now keep this toll-free number in mind, 888-259-4449. That's the phone number to call to get free information about our featured guests. When you do call, be sure and ask to be added to the subscription list of our Money TV newsletter. Again, toll free from anywhere in the world, 888-259-4449. Visit us at Facebook and, and like us on Twitter. Well, we're joined now by the CEO of Single Point, Mr. Greg Lambrick. Of course, their stock symbol is S-I-N-G, Single Point Incorporated. Greg, this is great. Yeah, no, we're really excited and uh, it's really Really cool to be at a at a dispensary to show what we've done, but more importantly, I guess I want to congratulate you on your 1,000 episode. That's really neat that you've allowed us to be on your show. Well, you know, when you think about 1,000 shows, you think, gee, I was must have been 15 when I started the show, right? <laughs> That's that, I'll go with that too. Now, we've been covering your company for about four or five years. The transition and the growth of the company has really been amazing. Take us back four or five years ago. You were a mobile payments company. Tell us about the company then. Well, you know, we started off uh, really in the text message business, and uh, when the iPhone came out, we were able to do transactions uh, on the phones with credit cards. So uh, we really got into to mobile payments, and um, it's interesting to where it's gone because uh, you know that's exactly the problem we're trying to solve now with um, kind of merging the cryptocurrency and the cannabis uh, sectors together. And what we're going to show you today is how um, we've been working on a, a platform that is going to allow dispensaries to take cryptocurrency and, more importantly, allow customers to pay for cannabis with, with Bitcoin and other coins. So we're really excited, obviously. Well, we're here at the end of 2017 as we're filming this. And 2017 has been a watershed year for your company. You've made four, maybe five acquisitions. You've gotten into different aspects of the, of the whole industry. Tell us about 2017s. I know you're yeah. very proud of it. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I think I've said this to you, you before, you know, of course, the overnight success 15 years later. Uh, but the company is extremely healthy right now. We just uh, raised a uh, million dollars out of a, out of an opportunity to take four million there. Um, our market cap hit 100 million this wow. month, wow. and uh, boy, the, the sky's the limit for for single point and saying we're we're just uh, right on the verge of, of doing everything that we hope we, we could do. Well, your company has become one of the most watched stocks on the OTC markets. I mean, you're trading multiple million dollars a day in stock value. I mean, it's got to be very rewarding for you. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, you know the company takes a lot of pride in, in getting the word out of what we're doing, but. More importantly, um, I'd like to think that we're out in the forefront of solving the, uh, the banking problems in the cannabis industry with cryptocurrency. And as you know, both of those products are, are very hot right now. Right. And, um, you know, this commercial and uh, we're also planning on doing a national commercial. So uh, it, is, it is very exciting and the sky's the limit. Well, you're absolutely right because we have two, com two uh, industries that are extremely hot, especially yeah. in the OTC markets. Cannabis and cryptocurrency. Yes. Anytime you talk about one, you can't help but talk about the other because the two are kind of converging, and that's really what you're concentrating on right now. Well, that's it. I mean, uh, it, it's not a stretch for us. This is what we are. We're, we're a merchant processor. We have mobile payments. So for us to build out a platform to allow dispensaries and, and consumers to use cryptocurrency is perfect for us. That, that, that's, a, that's our business. So. Um, uh, I, I can't wait to tell you what, what's in store for us, but what we expect is to have millions and millions of consumers that have downloaded our, our platform on their mobile wallet, and we expect uh, uh, dispensaries to follow suit to start accepting it. And that's, that's a little bit of, about what today is um, filming here at this particular dispensary. Well, your growth has been strategic in 2017 because first you got into cannabis, yep. into the cannabis uh, sector. And people are probably wondering, Greg, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're a mobile payments company. 
then as you segued into the cryptocurrency, this is really going back to the roots of what the company was all about. Yeah, exactly. And getting back to your other point, one of the exciting things uh, for me as the CEO and, and, and all of our shareholders, for the past six months, we're, we're trading more like a, a blue chip stock. Right. We were at six cents, uh, you know, with a lot of volume for three or four months. Now we've hit a new threshold at 10 cents with a lot of volume. So we're not having big swings up and down, which is really exciting. That's where you want to be. So I expect our, our next jump and then to hold again. And that's, that's exactly how you want to do this. Now your acquisition activity and your acquisition targets must be really excited about the volume and the liquidity of your stock. Yeah, well, like you said, we acquired four companies uh, this year. And um, I, I can't even tell you how much deal flow that, that we have in the works. In fact, we've had to hire two experienced uh, negotiators just to to handle our deal flow um, and uh, we're going to be announcing a lot of uh, acquisitions and funding and investments in 2018 and you're exactly right because the volume of our stock and our market cap we are able to really get good deals I'll say for single point. Well we're going to be talking to other people associated with the company we're going to be doing a demonstration of your payment app here in this dispensary so it's really been exciting once again the company is single point incorporated. S-I-N-G, talking to their CEO, Greg Lambrick. Greg, all I can say is congratulations on a tremendous year. Only great things to come. Yeah, we're, we're, we're really excited. We're, we're really at the top of our game, and uh, uh, big things are going to happen for us in, in, in 2018, and including, uh, you know, hopefully stock appreciation. And uh, all I can say is go sing. Well, we're joined now by Will Ralston. Will is the president of Single Point Corporate. Again, their stock symbol is S-I-N-G. Will, always good to see you. Thanks for having me, Don. Now, I want to talk with you about the cryptocurrency side of things, uh, Bitcoin specifically. I mean, a lot of people have different ideas about cryptocurrency, a lot of misinformation out there about cryptocurrency, but everybody knows the one statistic that $100 of uh, Bitcoin in 2010 is worth like $100 million today. Everybody gets pretty excited about that. Oh, yeah. The growth has been absolutely unbelievable. So the people that are really starting to pay attention, it's really uh, making it more consumers are starting to adopt it and pay attention to where Bitcoin could possibly go. Well, what's really interesting is a lot of people are trying to figure out how they can make money with Bitcoin. How, how can they profit from it? And whether you want to trade the Bitcoin, it's been very volatile. I think one day last week it went down $2,500 in like a four-hour period of time. Yep. That can scare people away. But single point is converging the cannabis industry with the cryptocurrency industry. You guys have figured out a way to make money, and it doesn't really matter what happens with Bitcoin. Tell us about that. Absolutely. So our goal here is to become and let, enable Bitcoin to be transactional. I mean, that was its key fundamental, right? It was going to be used as a transaction medium for people to essentially exchange like they do cash, but utilizing uh, uh, Bitcoin. So. What we're working to do is provide this Bitcoin solution, and then every transaction that happens, we're actually participating in that transaction and get a transactional percentage. So whether the price of Bitcoin's at twenty thousand or ten thousand, uh, we are still transacting, and by by way of our platform, we collect a percentage. Well, of course, we're we're here in Los Angeles, California, and California is getting ready in a few short weeks to uh, be legal for recreational. That's going to balloon that industry beyond belief. But everybody that's being a customer right now in this collective is paying with cash. Correct. They can't use their credit card. There's an ATM machine on site, yep. but they're paying with cash. And that can be, number one, inconvenient. because Not everybody carries around a, cash, a lot of cash anymore. It Absolutely. can be a security risk for the business because the bad guys know, gee, there's a lot of cash in this business. Mm -hmm. And so you're making available to them the ability to use cryptocurrency. How's that going to work? Well, what we'd like to see it as is consumers are actually walking in prepared to uh, utilize their cryptocurrency and Bitcoin through the application that we've built. So uh, when they're they're already aware of it, and that's why we want to uh, make a big consumer adoption play initially. And then when they're going into pay, they're not worried about having enough cash on them or having to utilize an ATM. They're they're already prepared to make that payment. So you've developed an app, which we're going to demonstrate later on in the program, that allows people to come in to a dispensary like this one and make a purchase using cryptocurrency. Correct. 
And so, uh, and Greg mentioned earlier in the interview that uh, you're actually going to do a national infomercial that shows people how to download your app and get involved. Exactly. And that's part of the whole consumer play is that if we believe if we achieve high, achieve high consumer adoption, that that will be our uh, path of least resistance to uh, bringing on more merchants as well. And I've said this before, but I think it's worth repeating. This really goes back to the roots of what Single Point's all about because you were a mobile payments company from day one. Yep. Here you are now, again, another mobile payments company. That's right. But in, in converging, converging two of the hottest industries going right now. Well, it's really a, just a marriage made in heaven because uh, the cannabis businesses are having a really hard time uh, being able to electronically transact. And the cryptocurrency and Bitcoin uh, platforms enable them to do just that. Well, I spoke to one of the employees here that helps the uh, customers, and they said it's not unusual several times a day for someone to mistakenly think they can buy with their credit card. Oh, absolutely. I think we've seen it in here while we've been uh, doing these interviews. Right, and, and, and they have to direct them to the ATM machine, or they have to turn them away. Correct. So you can eliminate this problem that we have right now, because there's like 30 or 31 states in the country where marijuana is legal, is mm -hmm. legal. And, but yet it's still federally illegal, which means they can't use the banks. This cryptocurrency solution that you folks have, have developed is really the solution to that problem. Absolutely. So they'll be able to essentially bank online through the use of the Bitcoin platform we've built. Now, you're, you're here in California. That means something's up with single point. I always said that when Greg's in, in, in town. But basically, California is just a few short weeks away. I think it's the middle of January where uh, it becomes legal in California recreationally. That's going to balloon these businesses beyond belief. I think... Um, you know, here in Los Angeles, it might be April before all these uh, dispensaries are licensed for recreational purposes. But when you start getting these transactional fees, that's tremendous revenue uh, opportunity for the company. Oh, absolutely. They're expecting California to be a $7 billion industry. So if we can capture a piece of those transactions and a uh, piece of that revenue, then I think we'll be pretty well off. Now, you're working and I know that the company has headquarters both in Seattle and in, 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 in Phoenix. Do you see yourselves expanding to other markets besides California? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we want to make a nationwide play. So uh, that's one of the reasons we've stayed hands off the plan is because we can actually take our technologies and go to every single state as they open up. Now, as I mentioned to Greg in the inter earlier interview, you've made several uh, acquisitions this year. Mm -hmm. It's been a tremendous growth year for the company. I mean, you must be really excited what's going to happen in 2018. Well, 2018, I think, is our most exciting year yet. We've really positioned ourselves to have a, a strong 2017 and parlay that into a strong 2018. Once again, Will Ralston, he's the president of Single Point. We've been talking about cryptocurrency and cannabis and the convergence thereof. Uh, Will, very exciting. Thanks so much. Hey, thanks for having me on the show again, Don. Appreciate it. I've had this problem. Big problem. I really, really needed a good investment forum. And I kept searching and searching. Ah, there are so many choices. It's really hard to find one that has all the things on my list. But I finally did it. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. If you were looking for one as well, look no further. Here's a really good one. Just use mine. Use mine. I'm very satisfied. Definitely recommend. Problem gone. Thank you. Have you heard the news? There's only one flat fee news distribution network on the market. It's called Access Wire, and it's exclusively from Issuer Direct. Any day, any time, the Access Wire news network can deliver your press release to more than 1,500 media outlets in 98 countries. Access Wire also delivers real-time engagement analytics. You will learn who read and shared your press release and more. Best news of all, getting started is easy. Visit accesswire.com and extend your company's news reach today. We are back. Thanks for staying with us. I'm joined now by Nicole Fox. She is the founder of a company called Aon Cannabis Wellness. Uh, Nicole, welcome back to the program. Hi. Great to be here. Now, we had you on the program back in studio a couple of weeks ago. It was a fascinating discussion. You helped set us up here in this collective. Uh, you are... I'll refer to you as the guru, so to speak, in Los Angeles <laughs> right, of the medical marijuana industry. You're very well known in the industry. Give us a little bit of your background here in LA. Sure, so LA has a rich, uh, almost 17 year history of medical cannabis in Los Angeles. We were actually the first 
city to really start opening dispensaries and I opened two of the first medical cannabis collectives in LA. Mm -hmm. uh, since then I've moved into the wholesale cultivation side but mm -hmm. we're planning on doing what's called vertically integrating uh, and opening yeah. retail a retail location in downtown Los Angeles later in 2018. Well it's really amazing because we're in here and it looks like a pharmacy. It doesn't yeah. look like something you would expect of a marijuana collective. What was it like in the early days when you first got started? It like you said, 15, 16, 17 years ago. I mean, then we were just watching our backs and making sure that we weren't getting arrested and providing medicine to patients and we weren't able to put so much into the look, feel, you know, we were safe, we had security, but, you know, it kind of ended there. So now that we've had this medical cannabis you know going on and for the last 17 years dispensaries that are medical there's enough legislation and, and regulation for them medically that they can look like this they, they know they're not gonna get raided they you know they can put some time money effort into and that's what I love about WHTC and I wanted to bring you guys here a, a good friend of mine that's done a lot of policy and advocacy work as the owner here um, and this is just a great example of where the dispensary model is going in coming years. Well, now Los Angeles, of course, is the second largest city in the country, largest city in the, in the largest state of the country. And um, how many dispensaries right now are there in LA? Right, so that's a, an urban legend. There's anywhere between 800 and 1,500, depending really? on who you ask. Um, but there's only currently around 130 that um, can legally be here. And the city of LA is about to put forward some big efforts to shutting down those illegal operators and bad actors because they're not paying taxes. Mm. The city isn't getting revenue from them. So there are people operating that should not be operating that are going to get shut down. Places like this are basically yeah. going to emerge and be the places that people can go to for their for their product. Right, and the city is also going to allow additional uh, locations to open. That's one of the licenses that Aon will be applying for as well. That and you know depends on who you ask again, but this looks like the city will cap them around 450 to 500 okay. retailers. Okay. Now one thing I noticed when I was talking to one of the employees here that works at the counter, they're really centered on helping people. Oh, yeah. And they were talking about various things from fibromyalgia to anxiety, even cancer. I mean, I was really blown away by that. Right, now a good a good medical dispensary employee, they especially at a place like this at WHTC, they're really you know well trained. They can speak with patients um, about you know different conditions. We have to be careful because you know dispensary operators are not doctors, so we have to be careful with our language right. around cure and you know things like that. But we can make recommendations for what kind of strains maybe a patient does better with an edible versus uh, you know inhaling it, vaporizing it. It just it, it all depends. But a good a good staff will be able to guide a, a patient um, and soon a recreational you know adult client to the right kind of cannabis for them now customers keep coming in here as we're having our conversation mm -hmm. and one thing they all have in common they're all paying cash right and because it's a cash yes. only business we've talked about that with the other two interviews on the program now you're going to do a purchase we're going to demonstrate a purchase here hypothetical purchase I, I should mention using single points app I'm uh, going to take it home you're sure. take it home <laughs> yeah. so we're going to make a purchase using single points app. Tell us what you think about this idea. I think it's a great solution that's being offered for the industry because although we're about to have you know full legalization for adult use and like you've said in a few uh, weeks now, we still really don't have a solution to the banking problem and we're a while away from having that. So I think it's a, a, a great uh, a great opportunity, and also I've been watching the news. I have Bitcoin now as a news alert, um, and I've been you know watching all of the attention around Bitcoin. So I think as consumer adoption for Bitcoin increases, it's only a natural fit that in the cannabis uh, the cannabis buying public that they'll adopt an app like Single Seed. Well, we filmed your purchase a moment ago. Let's take a look at that right now. Restock on Sativa. What do you have that's in the like, you know, mid to higher priced range quality? Just show me your favorite. I trust you. For sure. One of my personal favorites right now is going to be the Terra Cookie. Okay, cool. You have the yeah. tongue friends. Feel free to. Nice. Okay, maybe show me one other thing so I can sure. compare. Yeah. Leave this one out. And then I've got the Terra Reserve. Oh, super chunk. 
What is the terror reserve? What's the that one cross? is a ghost soji crossed with a Malibu pure push oh, wow. and a cactus. That's really good. Awesome. How much is it for a quarter? Ninety for a quarter. Okay, great. I'll take a quarter of that. What else is bringing you in today? Uh, I, need, I need a new edible for sleep. I mean, having something that's like a cookie and it's just too much, to, you know, sugar to have at night. So I'm just looking for something that's like Excellent indica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really love these pure nirvanas. Oh, okay. So that is going to be four 25 milligram doses. Oh, cool. And it's like scored total. and exactly. everything. So I would just take like you a You literally four. just peel it apart. Oh, open this. it up okay. and peel it And what is it? It's like, it's like Gatorade. It's, it's, like, it's, it's blueberry. Blueberry. Flavor. Okay. Yes. Awesome. And how much are these? Um, those run for 12 each. Okay. Uh, let's do two of those. Cool. I'll get that all laid out for you right now. Okay. And the package. To anything else today? No, I'll do it. We're at 114. Oh, oh, I have the new Bitcoin app. I heard you guys are trying out. So for the scan it on there. Yeah. Beep, beep. Yay. Yay. It worked. Awesome. I'm gonna get that all bagged up for you. That was nice, quick, and easy. Get you out of here. You're off. Oh. <laughs> You're off work. Get you out of here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Take care. Well, that was amazing. I mean, you know, here we are, something that could not be done a few months ago, mm -hmm. a few days ago even, where you just made a purchase electronically yeah. where before it had to be cash. Uh, how'd that feel? It felt easy to use and simple. It actually just felt like I was almost like Uber or something. <laughs> like in my, I, there was no cash that took place and I just clicked something and then I got my purchase and that was it. It was way easier than I thought it was going to be. Being in the business as long as you have, do you see this as a tremendous advantage going forward for, comp for, for collectives like this? I do, I do. It's, it seems like it's going to be really simple to adopt for uh, for collectives, and I think it's a great solution while we, you know, await the, the banking solution issue to be solved. Have you ever wondered what a cannabis expert looks like? It looks like Nicole Fox, <laughs> A.N. Cannabis Wellness. I've just been around so. long enough that you can consider me an expert, sure. <laughs> Nicole Fox, A.N. Cannabis Wellness. Uh, Nicole, thank you so very much for joining us. Thanks so much. Well, I'm joined now by Alan. Alan's one of the managers here at WHTC Collective. Alan, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, you folks have been around for a little while. It's really fascinating to see the business model that you have here. We've been here for a couple hours filming this program. We've seen just dozens and dozens of people coming in here. Your staff is very helpful to them. Tell us about the history of your company. So we're a family-owned business. Uh, started by my mom and dad around the time that my grandmother was diagnosed with breast cancer. My mom was looking for alternative medicines and just ways to help my grandma that weren't so tough on her body because she wasn't reacting well to chemo. So we resorted to cannabis, which really helped with her nausea. And I think that just inspired and drove my parents to take this upon themselves to help others. So little by little, we grew as a family business from a small little store in Woodland Hills to running a pretty full-scale dispensary now and fully managed by the family. You know, that is a fascinating story. I was not aware of that. So your grandmother had cancer, yeah. and this was the reason that this is all here today. Mm -hmm. That's why our mission statement is uh, here to help and here to heal. Now, of course, uh, you know, right now this is a medical collective, but that's how it is in California. Sometime in 2018, when the licensing gets all figured out in Los Angeles, these cannabis uh, collectives are going to turn into recreational. Or both. Or both. Mm -hmm. How do you think that's going to change the business? Uh, I... I think it just exposes us to a greater variety of people. As of now, we've really been trying to service medicinal patients, mm -hmm. people that need cannabis to deal with ailments, whereas mm -hmm. I think the recreational market is really going to open up to just normalizing cannabis and not making it such a taboo issue. Now, do you suppose, I mean, I'm asking you questions you may not be prepared for, but ask them anyway, but will you need a separate showroom for recreational that you would, for, would be for medical? How will that work? To my understanding, no, we, don't, we wouldn't need a separate showroom as much as uh, it comes down to taxing, 
Mm -hmm. So when, when you're checking someone out in the point of sale system, you would have to designate them as either a recreational patient or a medicinal patient because they'd be taxed differently. And uh, the products that they're allowed to purchase or donate for if they're medical are different, different limits. Now, of course, uh, you started out with such a noble cause. Your grandmother, as you mentioned, you've been medical all this time. That's what is legal. Do you anticipate going recreational as well? I do, when we're allowed to, absolutely. It, it, it's not going to happen as of January 1st. No, we, of course not. We're going to have to apply to be a rec to have a recreational license on top of our medical license. And the, the whole bureaucratic system is going to come into play, and obviously the regulators are stepping in, and things are going to be a little more difficult at first, but I think they're just growing pains towards normalizing this whole industry. Yeah, I've heard estimates of anywhere from April to June or even beyond that. Exactly. Now, we uh, a few moments ago in the program, we demonstrated a potential a Bitcoin payment of, uh, of cannabis. I mean, it's not available yet, won't be available till next year, but we wanted to show people what that would be like. How do you think that's gonna change the industry? Because right now, of course, everybody coming in here is paying cash. Mm -hmm. If they wanna use their credit card, they have to be turned down They go to the ATM machine, which you have on premise. But how do you think cryptocurrency is gonna change the industry? Well, that was a neat demonstration. So I would say definitely speeds up the process. Uh, I think it also legitimize, it would legitimize the industry in terms of making it easier to be bankable. Mm -hmm. Going from just dealing with cash and having difficulty dealing with the banking system to having a cryptocurrency that doesn't have to go through a, a centralized bank where it's us to them, them to us. Uh, I, I think that could be kind of a streamlined system for our industry. How many times a day potentially does someone come in here, and I know we've seen dozens and dozens of customers come in in a couple hours Patience. we've been here. <laughs> Patients, excuse me. Uh, but how many times a day does someone just absentmindedly give you a credit card thinking they can buy it that way? All the time. All, All the time. The time. Yeah. And so uh, this is something the customer is already prepared for to do something electronically. You would be open to this if it became, if it became available? I think if it became more normalized. And uh, I, I think Bitcoin is going to find kind of its center where it's not going to be so volatile once mm -hmm. things stabilize. Yeah, I, I definitely think there's room for it in our industry. And I think... In, in the world, just in normal trade, day-to-day -day purchasing, I think the cryptocurrency is kind of the future. It's WHTC Collective here in Los Angeles talking to one of the managers, Alan. Alan, thank you so very much for your comments. Thank you so much for having me. Call us right now, 888 259 toll-free from anywhere in the world you're watching the program to get free information about Single Point and about Bitcoin. When you do call, be sure and ask you add the subscription list of our Money TV newsletter. It is free, just like the call. Toll free from anywhere in the world, 888-259-4449. Visit us at moneytv.net. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. That's our program this week, show number 1000 from the WHTC Collective here in Los Angeles. Thanks so much for joining us. As always, we'll see you again.